G'day guys and welcome back to the Back Pocket Plug Up Podcast. Here's myself, Caden McDonald, and I'm here with co-host, friend of the show and just best friend in general, Connor <laughs> Rogers. How are you travelling, mate? A friend friend of the show. I feel a little bit hard done by here as as a fully contracted co-host. <laughs> I, I think I'm, an equal, uh, I'm a contributor to the show, not just a friend, but yes, Fantastic McDonald, um, but a different tech, uh, <laughs> a, a different texture. This show, this back pocket plugger podcast. Uh, those listening on the Spotify and the podcast, or wherever you may be listening from, uh, you may not notice a single difference. But those watching on the YouTube will notice that we're in two different locations, McDonald. We are, we are. Um, do you want to talk us through the reasoning for for the two different locations? Well, there's a couple of reasons. We're sep- <laughs> <laughs> we're separated uh, by an hour and a half's journey from Geelong to beautiful Watsonia, uh, and it's due to the fact that I've been crook, unfortunately, in the lead up to Saturday's big match, Banyul versus St Marys, um, came down with uh, a bit of a virus. Um, if I was a weaker man, I might even call it a flu. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, came down with that and I still haven't recovered, uh, mainly due to last night um, getting a bit out of hand. It was my little cousin's 18th birthday and I was meant to only have a couple of, couple of quiet ones due to me being ill, but the lid was absolutely off, <laughs> <laughs> Melbourne Demon style lid being off. <laughs> and, um, and I don't think that's helped the cold at all. So if you do hear me coughing during the podcast, I do apologise. But I didn't want to infect you, mate. You're on an absolute rock and roll with the content. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, I feel like I've committed a crime against humanity uh, and YouTube if I, if I put you out of action for a week. No, well, it's good. Well, in the modern times, you can do these things remotely, which has uh, has come in handy today. But uh, the lid's obviously off because of your cousin's birthday. But also, once again, another weekend where both our mobs get over the line. The D's and the and the Blues have um, have gotten up on Sunday. It's very very difficult for us not to talk about this because. We've just <laughs> we, you you are out the other side. You've been you've been through the shit, and to now just be <laughs> undefeated. What are we seven seven rounds in? Um, yep, seven zip. It's impossible not to talk about it. And for, for me, the bag is on. We're not completely out the shit yet, but we we need to celebrate every win because when the losses come, they can be debilitating to the mental health for the week. It's unbelievable. As we were saying, there's not many weekends where both our sides. Uh, both get up and I'm gonna be honest watching uh watching the great contest down in Tassie I was getting a little bit nervous that, <coughs> that North might have our measure I think you you sent me a sneaky text just saying um how are we feeling about this one and well I was like, oh. <laughs> it wasn't it, it was at half time and I, it wasn't like uh oh no the wheels were off we're no longer a flag fancy it wasn't a it, it wasn't <laughs> a demons pretenders after <laughs> It wasn't a demons pretenders after all, um, but it was just I wanted to gauge where you were at because, as we know, you've mentioned previously, being a Melbourne supporter, even if you're five goals up with five minutes to go in the last term, you feel like you're not home yet. But yeah, now you've got your trust and you feel like you are home. So I was curious to see it half time down against the winless and predicted to remain winless North Melbourne. Um, could you? Could you? Sus- were you still on the edge of your seat or did you have the faith that you were going to produce well, the chocolates? No, no, I was. I was on the end of, uh, edge of my sleep. Uh, that's not uh, butchered that saying anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, was, I was on the edge of my sleep for uh, half, that, <laughs> half that game. Um, no, yeah, that third quarter, I started to get yeah quite nervous. And um, the boys, I, I was watching it with you know a, a few blokes, friend of the show, friend of the channels. Um, y- your mid of bowls and, and cookos at, at Bakers were just stirring me yeah. all day saying, this is the one you drop, this is the one you drop. Yeah. And th- the whole game I was confident, but it gets halfway through the third and we're sort of still trailing by 20 and I'm going, oh, those demons are creeping in mentally. Yeah. And, and, and it was starting to worry me a little bit. But it's one of those ones where it's like, it doesn't look like a great performance and it wasn't. Um, you know, I think that's probably the worst I've seen us play in 12 months at least. Um, but it's one of those ones where uh, the good sides find a way to win that. Well, like the way I interpret it, right, some people who think that it's possible to come out each and every week and play your best footy and come out a bullet a gate a million miles an hour, 
you quite simply can't. Yeah, no matter what level of sport you're playing, as much as we like to think we're going to turn up and give it our best every week, it just takes too much effort to do that. You'd almost be doing yourself an injustice to do that. Um, yeah. So when you're when you're facing the winless North Melbourne, and you guys know if they they play a hundred percent of their ability, and you play at eighty percent of your ability, you win comfortably. When you know that. Mm. And you walk in and people will be there going, oh, they haven't rocked up to play. Um, you know, shame on them. I don't think that at all. I think you're, you're, doing, you're saving some energy tickets and you're probably doing the right thing by, um, by you know, not, not, uh, not playing your premiership footy at North Melbourne against Tasmania round seven. Yeah. Uh, look, yeah, I, I do agree with you. Um, it, it, yeah, it was nerve-wracking through that third. And then in, towards the last, they... Uh, ben Cunnington kicked one and, geez, the the heart was still going. But I just want to give a quick shout out. It's one of the first games I've watched of North all year. And obviously I, I've followed a, a few of their games, like scores wise, but um, not necessarily um, watched it in full. Like the, the game against Geelong a little while ago, uh, a couple of weeks back, it seems like they were quite competitive. And I, I'll tell you from first hand use, they, they were very competitive and they yeah. will win your two or three games this season. Like they, they have a lot more ticket than what I think people give them credit for. And yeah, they pushed us for the full four. Uh, are they beating the pies? That's going to be that is going to be interesting because I think if they pl- both teams play the way both teams played last weekend, like this weekend coming, I think North are in with a absolute chance and a half. Yeah. Um, They'll get a win the from la- somewhere. They always, there's always a team that is meant to be absolutely bottom of the barrel hopeless and somehow they'll they'll leak out a two two wins, three wins somewhere. Yeah, and, and I think they're hungry and I don't – I'm not seeing that from Collingwood, um, but we'll touch on that in a little bit. But how did you feel about the Blues? Uh, they, 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 got pr- uh, they got pushed for, for some of that game. We and did, well, we were behind the, by 20-odd points. So it was, it was a good bit of resilience to – to come over the top. Oh, I thought they were... It was almost impossible with the Lee Matthews rule, but I thought late. It got, got a little bit close for comfort, but um, just quickly yeah, they finished on, it off with a couple of sealers. Just quickly on the Lee Matthews rule, I think it has to <laughs> has to be the most ridiculous and overrated... How, how that has become a entrenched part of football vernacular is... Ab- yeah. Absolutely beyond me, right? He's, look, the law is simple. There's no ifs, buts, exceptions. It's if uh, there are, <laughs> the amount of minutes on the clock is the amount of goals that you could possibly get, right? Yeah. Now, if, they're, if you're 15 goals down with 15 minutes to go, by the Lee Matthews series, uh, theory, you're still a chance. Let me tell yeah. you, when you're 15 goals down with 15 on the clock, you are not, <laughs> you are not winning that game of football. Um <laughs> So uh, give it a spell, Lethal. But no, for the Blue Baggies, uh, it's funny that we're just in this, we're in that real middle group of just, you you come out, you beat the teams that you're supposed to beat, apart from the fact that we lost to the Pies a few weeks ago. But you beat the teams you're expected to beat, you probably lose um, to the contenders and there'll be a couple either way. You might, you'll get a scalp or two throughout the season and you'll also have a disappointing loss throughout the season. Yeah, if you're lucky, you'll scrape in for seventh or eighth. We're probably going to sneak in for a ninth or tenth, um, I think, or maybe an eleventh. Um, and that's our season, and you just have to go on that next year. But it was exciting to say we. I think we talked about it last week. If not, we definitely talked about it off air. Cunningham in the guts, Petrovsky, Seaton in the guts. Play these guys where they meant yeah. where where they were drafted to play, um, and watch the magic happen. And I know. You know, he gets hyped up about, deservedly so. But Sam Walsh could win the Brownlow this year. I'm not saying I think he will. I'm saying he legitimately could win the Brownlow this year. That's um, that's how good he is. And he's only 20 years old. So, um, I, I, in my opinion, he's already overtaken Creeper as the best and most important player at our football club. Yeah, I, I think he has as well. But <coughs> that, that's just on recent, recent form. Because I think people are sort of dismissing Creeper a little bit. Um, you know, I think over the last couple of years, which is really impressive from Sam Walsh's point of view, I think he probably is, has been and is your best player. But, you know, I, I don't know whatever Cripp is carrying, but it's one of those ones where he could come out next year and then just perform the way we know he can. Yeah. He's just having an, yeah, a bit of a rough 
rough trot. But, geez, I was impressed with our man, Matty Owies. Oh, our boy. Kick We've, three, I think. Yeah, yeah, he did. Well, I've been raving about him. He always kicks goals in the twos. Um, and that's all you want. All you want from your small forward is someone who can find the big six. We were lucky enough to meet him uh, two or three years back at a, at a work function. Um, yep. He and Will Setterfield... Uh, rocked up. I was actually getting me face painted um, uh, <laughs> with, with a rainbow butterfly face paint. The, the, the whole size of my face. And you're standing next to me taking the piss out of me for getting this face paint done. And I'm, <laughs> I'm doing it just to be a bit of a fool. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, anyway, my eyes are shut as she's painting uh, rainbow rainbow eyelids on me. And you go, Roger, you're not going to believe this. And I go, what? And I can't open my eyes. And you go, the Carlton boys are here. And I thought, very funny. I thought you'd take the piss out of me just as I'm getting me rainbow face paint done. The blue bag is rocked up. <laughs> and you go, no, mate, we'll set a field of Matt Owies are here. I open, <laughs> I open, I open my eyes. I walk over to say g'day to us because we were emceeing the event. And I've got rainbow butterfly all over me, so... <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a bit of a shame, but yes, our boy, our boy Matteo is very impressive, very happy. And look, I know every team has injuries, but this week we've got Jack Martin, uh, Nick Newman, Jack Silvani, uh, Tom DeConning, Mark Murphy, all touted to come back into the lineup. And there's not five players you can drop from that team, so um, plenty, to, plenty more to come. Hopefully, I'm hoping f- we've got the D's and the Dogs in the next couple of weeks. And if we can nail a scalp out of that, I was dare to dream of perhaps a, a unlikely finals berth, given where we were. Jeez, that, that's a couple of season-defining matches coming up. Well, okay, and, and don't take this the wrong way. I realise we've just beaten Essendon at uh, at the J. <laughs> we're not blowing yeah. blowing this out of proportion, and we, you know, it wasn't the most convincing of wins. But um, let's just say we happen to. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say we happen to win both. Because if you win the first, <laughs> if you win the first one, all of a sudden you've won two in a row. The boys believe we've got all these injured players back, and now yeah. And then if you do win both, all of a sudden it, the 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 talk of the Teague tra- the wheels falling off the Teague train, they're gone. Um, and mm. it's on for young and old. So we won't get ahead of ourselves. Take it week by week. Um, but gee, I, I am I am. Isn't it funny how much of a difference a win makes? Oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. And and what was also impressive, I thought, was uh, Essendon. Like, they lost, but I'm still looking at that list and getting really impressed by their young players. Yeah. Uh, Harrison Jones is so exciting. They he is s- so exciting. They um, surprised me. Everyone talks about Nick Cox, and rightfully so. I mean, he's just... I can't wait to see him develop. Um, how, how's... Uh, one of, one of my great mates. One of my great mates. Uh, I will name him. Dil- Dylan Danoon. Ah, uh, Noonie. Uh, Noonie. We love Noonie. He's been on the vlogs. Uh, he, he's been everywhere. But a, he... You're, you're a big Noon man? I'm a big Noonie man. Massive Noonie man. Um, loves his cats. Loves his footy. He hit the group up and he goes, geez, I love this this Nick Cox player. Yeah. I'm not sure, I'm not sure why, but... He just reminds me of Dean Cox, the way he goes about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he wasn't kidding. Like, he, he just felt that he resembled Dean Cox. And I, I said, what, this versatile running wingman? <laughs> not even is, not even close. <laughs> Tall. Is giving you Dean Cox vibes. Uh, Obviously, the name is, is where the connection would make the most sense. But he just thought that they go about it. It's <laughs> quite similar. I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say I'm... Um, more, I, I, I'm more on noon than bloody twelve o'clock midday. But uh, after, <laughs> uh, after hearing that comment, I'm starting to have a second thoughts. Um, something that we sort of overlooked in our uh, very strenuous and extensive uh, pre pre podcast uh, preparation and planning uh, yep. was our headline of the week for Dawson Rods Limited. Oh, the headline. The headline. But I, I've got a sorted dossier. I've got the yes. The back papers are written. And uh, it says, no dusty, no tigers, question mark. No dusty, no worries. Yes, e- lovely. Ex- that would sell off the racks. Exclamation mark. Uh, mate, Jeez, it was good. Yeah. I, I actually had that as me goals for the goals behind out in the fools, but uh, that's right. I think it's worth talking about now <laughs> uh, because... 
I oh, know, certainly the charter uh, out at Nepean Street, Watsonia, uh, my stomping ground. If you were listening, had an ear to the wall of my household, you would have heard uh, Carlton Dad, Scotty Rogers. <laughs> For the past three years, he's been labelling no, no Dusty, no Richmond. They're a one-man team. But I love that they've come out and um, shut those people up. Yeah, well, it was it was it was it was unbelievable to be honest because the Bulldogs are humming. Yeah, they're absolutely humming the way they're going about it. <coughs> I sort of had uh, some some somewhat you know little jibes at the at the dogs uh, in retaliation to some of the jibes the D's have been receiving. But uh, you know, I sort of jokingly say to you, who have the dogs played? Who who have the doggies played? Yeah, and it was it was their audit. It was their David King audit. It was their big test. Friday yep. night football, MCG. Got them away from Marvel as well. Yep. Um, and they looked good for the first half. I still think Richmond sort of looked like they had control for parts of that first half. But the dogs were ticking along nicely. But that third quarter from the Tigers, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it, to be honest, in terms of just the domination. And they didn't quite put the score on the board, what? which... Was, Le- left it open a little bit late, but what was geez, the, it was impressive. What was the stat, Dossie? It was something absurd, like 20 to 25 minutes into that third quarter, the Dogs had not had a single disposal inside their forward half. Yeah, yeah. That, that is unheard of. They couldn't get the stat out. They couldn't find out whether that is actually unparalleled, but Jesus Christ, Lord Almighty, that's the most dumb. You are right. I've never seen a performance quite that dominant. Um, but they didn't. They didn't quite put them away on the scoreboard. It could have got to twenty or thirty points in that third term. I think it was only a couple of goals uh, at three quarter time, and then yeah, it was on for young and old in that last. But to see the Tigers kick a couple of sealers, it was geez, they they are threatening, and I I would never write them off. I, I'm not someone who would ever write them off, and I, I think after that performance. They are the league's yardstick, and they will be for a little uh-huh. while. I was, I was always certain that Richmond would come good in September. I knew that they'd be there or thereabouts for the big dance. Um, so I never jumped off them in that way. But to be honest, halfway through the second quarter, I did think they're no longer number one in the power rankings. I thought, yep. I thought if gun to my head, I had to pick someone to win the flag. I think Richmond were maybe second or third behind the D's and the Dogs. Um, for my power rankings, but after watching that comeback, that performance, it was a timely reminder that they are indeed number one at the power rankings and just leave him at number one, uh, win, lose or draw mm. for the rest of the season. I don't even care if they collapse and don't make the finals, they will find a way to win the grand final. Um, a team I want to get your thoughts on in terms of power rankings, I think we're singing their praises when they knocked off the Tigers on a Friday night clash a couple of weeks ago, but... The power, once again, they went over to Optus and couldn't quite get it done against West Coast. And not only couldn't quite get it done, but got slacked over over in WA. And it sort of happened again against another team you'd think is in their category in the Brisbane Lions up at the Gabba. Uh, well, my uh, my goal for the goals behinds out in the full, uh, out in the fulls was pinched for the headline, and uh, my behind has been pinched for the sake of conversation. But I'm not <laughs> I'm not a I'm not opposed to talking about it now because it is a worry. If you're a Port fan, you're officially worried, and they've got they've slipped in my power rankings. Um, yeah. Because they yeah. You know, while we talk about uh, Richmond being the audits. Um, anytime you play a contender, it is an audit of sorts. You get a grasp of exactly where you're at. And yeah. uh, they've, they have come up against the Eagles. They've come up against the Lions. And they haven't just lost, but um, they've lost in a pretty piss-weak fashion. So, um, yeah. so, yeah, they've slipped down the rankings. And the fact is, if you're going to win, fi- if you're going to make a grand final, uh, win a grand final, you'll need to be able to play away footy against the best teams in the comp. And at the moment, they've proven that they cannot do that. They're not capable. So we need well, to... Yeah. Go on. I'll, I was just about to jump in and say, especially against like West Coast aren't the West Coast of what, they, <clears throat> of what they've shown over the last few years at, at this current time. No doubt they'll get some momentum and, and, um, and bounce back towards the end of the year. But to start the season, they haven't been too flash. So to lose to them at that time was a bit... And questionable. The Lions, and the Lions are yeah. just starting to just starting to find their feet again, but it's n- it's not the Lions of 2019, 2020 up at the Gabba either. So no. that's why it's a bit of a question mark. Yeah, the Lions, and you know what? Both the Lions and the Eagles 
aren't really factoring in my premiership calculations at the moment. While I mm. acknowledge they're one of the better teams, I'm not sitting here going, you know, I, I think I would be surprised if the Lions or Eagles won the flag based on current form. Um, yep. So for Port to lose to both of them, while they are good size, but to lose to them convincingly, um, I tell you what, if I was a sailor on their ship, I'd be uh, I'd be jumping board off board onto incoming traffic because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> if I was on a ship, I would jump <laughs> onto traffic. <laughs> I uh, look, I was making off an aeroplane <laughs> into a skate park. <laughs> look, maybe that's that's one for the back pocket where uh, we <laughs> we. New team rule, we don't make analogies on the fly and uh, <laughs> and expect them to be be sail through post site. No good point. I, I will allow you to make headlines up on the spot because that proved <laughs> pretty good about 10 minutes ago, but analogies, uh, none, no more of that. Basically what I'm trying to say is I'm off their ship. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm not buying what they're s- selling. I'm not, I'm not feeling what they're dealing. Um <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, so I'm off the board bandwagon. But let's uh, let's talk coaches. It wouldn't be a uh, footy show or a footy podcast if you didn't um, sign the death warrant of a coach. Uh, it seems to be the way every show's going. Uh, but Nathan Buckley, what are what are your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on the champion? God, it's getting messy now, isn't it? <laughs> I question whether he actually, you know, of course he's going to save face and and you don't want to speculate these things, but of course he's going to save face and say, I want this job. But i got to wonder whether he actually wants the job. Like he has to know that they're not, Mm. they're not in finals contention for another best case scenario, like grand final contention. If they get their rebuild perfect five years, um, does he want to go through another five years, best case scenario of, Back page of the papers, constant speculation. Is Buckley the man for the job? Speaking personally, I I think I'd be more tempted. If I do have that fire in the belly to coach, I think I'd be more tempted to wave goodbye to Collingwood, look elsewhere and see if I can start fresh with a new group. Yeah. Well, it's getting messy because their new president, do you, do you know his name? Is it Corder? Mark Corder. Mark Corder. Well, he came out last week and said they're still trying to make finals. So instead of like sort of shifting the goalpost and – uh, lessening the expectations when you were what one and five, he put the pressure back on and said, "No, we we still want to make finals. Um, it, they're they're not going to make finals, and they don't really look like as like a football club. They're trying to do that. They're blooding the youth at the moment, which is unreal. Like I, I love seeing the youth come in. I love seeing what Essendon have done and, and what other teams do when you get into this position. But they are clearly." blooding the youth which is unreal so I don't know why the expectation a week ago was that they still want to make finals but yeah it is it, it's a really tricky situation for Bucks where I you don't see many coaches that have coached for 10 years not win a flag I, I don't know, but, you know it, it gets to it gets to a point where like you need that fresh start like I think North Melbourne sort of went through that and I'm not saying the pies and the new North Melbourne but uh, Brad Scott was there for 10 years didn't get that ultimate success. So I think you really got to start again. And I think starting again with a coach can help. Yeah, I have conflicting, and I had to sit on the fence here, but I have conflicting uh, opinions on it. The first is uh, this is a bloke who, who was one Dom Sheed kick away from being a grand final coach, from being a premiership coach. Um, and it's all well and good to sack him, but... You're hiring someone who you have no idea if they have the capabilities to be a kick away from winning a premiership. So yeah. it's buyer beware. I, I'm i all for getting rid of him, fresh start. If you have someone lined up who you are 100% confident, obviously you'll never be 100% confident, but who you are relatively confident they are the, that's the coach who is capable of taking to a flag. But yeah, yeah, sitting in their chair right now at the front of the table, um, in that coach's box is a man who we know is capable of pretty much winning a premiership because he was one greatest moment of all time away from uh, from doing it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, they just want to make sure they have someone someone uh, teed up. But, yeah, obviously the, the other thought is um, you don't want to be listening to the one voice for too long. Even uh, mm. people I love, people I look up to um, – People that I really admire, even best mates like yourself, um, 
don't get me wrong. There's never been a time where I've gotten sick of you. <laughs> but I reckon if I reckon if we were stuck in a house together and you know we're only hearing each other's voices, it would be a period of time where you go, I need some fresh air, and I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't of mind. Course. I wouldn't mind some fresh thoughts and opinions. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I think I think it is due a freshen up just to just to reinvigorate the club. I, I think they they've got one of the hardest oh. coaching decisions all context included, coming up. Like, it, it's not an easy decision where it's like, uh, clear cut, yeah, they've been underperforming and this coach clearly can't coach. So what what you've said just before was, yeah, really important. It, it's one of those sort of club decisions that'll really define them because it's like, if they make the wrong call in getting someone else, it could really set them back. So that's a, that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out it, the rest of the year. It is unbelievable how big of a commitment it is. Like, you just need to make sure you get it right. You can't afford to get it wrong. It's part of the reason, certainly not because um, not because no one, no woman wants to be with me. Part of the reason why yes, yeah, I'm struggling to dive my head first into a relationship is it's such a big – you don't want to get it wrong. You don't want to get yeah. – you don't yeah. want to get a missus realise eight months in – Oh, I've probably made the wrong call here. Sorry, I'm looking elsewhere. You know, yeah. I I don't envy the people at the uh, at the head of selection for the new coach because there is that much pressure on that choice. All right, Roggy, we're now onto GBO, one of the biggest and best segments going around. Uh, not copied from Sportsbet, no. Which, is, uh, which we yeah, which we stand by. Uh, genuinely wasn't, but um, <laughs> with, I, I, with the G <laughs> with the GBO, <laughs> I'm going to kick off with my out on the full, if you don't mind. Go for it. Um, I'm not going to go too hard in the paint. It's just <laughs> it could probably go in the behinds more yeah. than the out on the fulls. But having the derby with no crowd was oh. uh, a bit interesting, and I think they made the call at ten o'clock that morning. Okay, well I'm. So, gl- so, I'm glad we're on the same page here because my out in the full is Mark McGowan, the WA Premier. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got personal beef with Mark McGowan. I, he, <laughs> so no it, surprise you've named and shamed. Irrespective of his decision about the crowd, he probably would have been my out in the full this week and in <laughs> uh, and in many weeks to come. Quickly, I won't go into the whole story, but I was on a lovely Perth holiday over New Year's uh, with 10 of my best mates. Uh, we had a music festival lined up for New Year's Eve and I get a text from the WA government due to one case in Victoria. Anyone who are, is in WA from Victoria uh, has to be deported. You have to go back to Victoria or hotel quarantine for two weeks, which costs a couple grand. So Mark McGowan kicked us out halfway through our WBA Perth holiday uh, for the sake of one case in Victoria. So You got kicked out of the state we, on New Year's Eve and you had to rush to the airport. We... From the time we found out that uh, we were kicked out, we um, went on to flight centre. And because it's New Year's Eve, there's bugger all flights. There was one flight mm. back at 3.30. It was 2.30 when we got the text and we were sipping beers on the water on 28 degrees and absolutely sparkling. And we booked the tickets and we made it to the airport with quite literally 30 seconds to spare. That's crazy. Um He's done a, a pretty good job over there keeping WA safe. They've had a couple of well. uh, cases. <laughs> they, they, they've had a couple of cases out of quarantine. Um, but, yeah, there's a big uproar at the moment. That's what I want to touch on because, obviously, to <coughs> cater for a football te- uh, a football game and to have staff on, at, at 10 o'clock in that morning, you can't just, like, not pay someone – who, who's been contracted to work there and stuff like that. So that they're talking about a huge loss in terms of like food that's getting thrown out uh, because the game was meant to happen with 75% capacity and now it's not. So Well, I'm not um, – I'm here to bash Mark McGowan as much as anyone is. Um, I like to refer to him as Mark McCoward. But um, <laughs> where we're um, – I couldn't agree with you anymore. It is devastating, but – on the same uh, token, we shouldn't be treating the AFL um, any differently to any other business. You know, there would have been restaurants who had all their food t- teed up for Saturday service, had a booked out restaurant. Um, True. And all of a sudden now they have to throw their food out. It, basically any business that was planning on being up and running that day uh, suffered. So it is a shame that that's happened to the AFL, but um, I'm sure it's happened to many other businesses too. Of course. Uh, we'll move on to the behinds. Uh, I'm going to kick one off with a controversial one. A little oh, bit different. Hang on. Um, <coughs> so the behinds, you know, as we mention every week, is 
you, you haven't kicked a goal, but you haven't kicked it down on out on the full. Yeah. You're a bit, you're a bit iffy about a you, bit of a just, bit of a watch this space. Um, I might go around in circles with this one, but <laughs> Benny Brown with the D's. Uh, it, it wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't the answer to all our problems. Yeah, and, and it's something that it's something that I want to watch for a little bit. Um, well, in, in, in yeah. you go, mate. No, you go. Oh, I was just going to say, in saying that, you know, glass half. If this had been round one, Benny Brown plays. I would get and say like you know before we're seven and zip or and whatnot. I would have got really nervous by that sort of performance because he just did look a a step behind everyone. He wasn't quite getting separation from Ben Mackay. Um, he wasn't a big threatening target. So a part of me goes, oh, you know, the, the glass half empty. Part of me goes, oh, I'm a little bit nervous about where he sits and where he slots in to the forward line that's been humming. But then the glass half full part of me goes, well, Ben Brown being out there helped uh, Bailey Fritch kick six. Never kicked six in his career. Ben Brown taking the best defender, um, got Bailey Fritch off the chain. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a watch this space, but it, it wasn't the absolute, uh, you know, uh, full forward answer that I was necessarily hoping for. Yeah, my couple of opinions on that one is that um, his first game back in the ones um, after a bit of time off, coming back from injury. Um, I'm going to give him time, going to give him a few weeks to get that pace back, get that separation. Um, but where it does get tough is when you have Sam Wiedemann not just banging the door down, but absolutely <laughs> launching nuclear missiles through it. <laughs> if any, anyone's been watching the VFL, I feel like I'm watching Wayne Carey out there for, for the Casey Scorpions. Um, you know, you got to wonder, Sam Wiedemann would be sitting there going, what else do I have to do to get a game? Um, yep. Why has Ben Brown jumped me in the queue? Um, so, yeah, look, uh, the reason why it's a big behind for me is just because me personally, from what I've seen, I think I, I would rather see the weed in there myself. Mm. Uh, but on to my behinds. Um, now, this is, some may even call this a cop-out because this is one that you could just use every week. Um <laughs> But my behind, and the reason why it's not down the full is because it's just a part of the game, it's a part of professional sport, but injuries are just crawling. I feel like there's more injuries this year than there ever has been, and I don't know the numbers behind it, but there are a lot, yep. lot of factors towards that. But it just seems like so many key players are getting injured, and speaking selfishly and one idly about my beloved Blue Baggers, um, someone like a Mitch McGovern who... Fought so hard to get himself, uh, get himself fit and get himself into form. Is much maligned by the supporters and by uh, the footy footy community as a whole. Comes out playing great footy, showing that he, he is a very important cog in the team and getting all the supporters on side with him. And in the last two minutes, he does a hamstring, and he's going to be yep. out for the next few weeks and loses all continuity. Then he needs to build himself back up, build himself up through the twos, find form again, come back in, and then you always have that lingering thought in the back of your head that he's probably just going to get injured again because it happens so often. So my behind is um, Mitch McGovern because he was looking so good and then he, unfortunately, had the hamstring and injuries as a whole. Well, I think this year, obviously, the talk about uh, the rotations and the time of the game, I think this was the year they had to go to 18 minutes. Yep. And I've seen a lot of people talk about, oh, there's heaps of injuries this year, so we should go back to 18 minutes. Uh, next year, I think now was the year to do it because I think if we just play twenty minutes next year, the there's not going to be as many injuries. I think this the players will be sort of seasoned to playing that full game of footy again. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I think they missed the boat of like bringing that eighteen minute uh, quarter time in. I think and, eighteen and eighteen minutes is a great time, not just for the injury front, but there are times where I can be at a game of footy, especially. Um, if it's not a, a particularly good match, um, which a lot of them aren't, where 20 minutes does start to drag, especially with time on. Yeah, yeah. I think 18 minutes would be um, a lot more a lot more in, enjoyable for, for the large majority. Uh, on to our goals. On to our six-pointers. Uh, I've gone with <clears throat> one of my favourites, and he's battled a last, the last couple of years, and I'm whipping him home because I... I love him, but uh, Jesse Hogan kicked ah. a bag on the weekend for the 
for the Giants against the Crows. Uh, he, he's someone that I always wanted to see do well. I he was so good at the D's when he first got drafted. And um, do we do we it, dare talk about the the absolute robbery of a decision that was Jesse Hogan over Paddy Cripps for the Rising Star? <laughs> I was so happy when Hogs got that. I know you um, were. I know you were. I was not. Coming coming off the back of Walker being robbed of Mark of the Year, um, <laughs> Simpson and Scott. I've always been very upset that Cade Simpson and East Scotland in their best and fairest years never made all Australian, especially Cade Simpson. Try and tell me yeah. Cade Simpson hasn't been in the best three small defenders of any one particular year. Um, and <laughs> I just felt like we were getting absolutely monstered by the AFL. We were getting absolutely victimised. Um if Patrick Cripps wasn't the rising star of that year, I'll go hey. But here we are, uh, and time has told a different story. But yeah, he's um, it, it was yeah, it, it was frustrating because he he made such an impact uh, so quickly, and it, it's funny because like as a D's fan, on one side of the coin, I'm watching Jack Watts take eight years to become a role playing. C grade football for our team, and 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 when he played that role, he was actually good. Like there was a couple of year period where Jack Watts was, you know, definitely one of our more handier players, but of a C grade level. Yeah. But on the other side of the coin, we have Jesse Hogan, who was like a jet from word go, and <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It was a bit disappointing the way he fizzled out, uh, a little bit with the D's in terms of. I don't know. We we started to play better without him, but then he went to Frio, and it seemed like those attitude problems or the way, I don't know, the way he goes about things. He couldn't quite get it going over at Freo, which was disappointing. So to see that he's it's sort of his last crack at it, and to see that he played well in the VFL, and then to play well in his first game for the Giants, I'm actually <laughs> pretty stoked for him. Yeah, well, one of my favourite things in. Um not just football, but uh, just any walk of life, is as much as we like to think that we don't judge a book by its cover, I think it's fair to say that when you see someone, subconsciously or not, you make a preconceived, uh, you make a little assumption about them, you a thought of what they might might be. Um, yeah. Uh, and when I see Jesse Hogan, um, something tells me that he's, he's, not prob- he's probably not going to be the best bloke to have a beer with down at the pub. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's a common opinion amongst the football world. But uh, you like seeing blokes kicking bags and shutting the haters up. So I'm mm. sure he's sticking the fingers up to all the people out there that's been knocking him for uh, for some of his antics. So good on him. Good on him for uh, for making me eat me words and for kicking bags. <laughs> good on you, Hoax. Um, Hoagie Rog, Bear. Do you have your goal? Do you have your goals? I think I may have, may have already run with this goal at a different week, but it's just. I love when I'm wrong. I remember you, you'll rec- <laughs> you'll recall when um, Sam Wiedemann, um I wrote Sam Wiedemann off, as did the whole football community. And then he had that stretch leading into finals where he he just looked unstoppable. He looked like bloody Jason Dunstall out there. Um, yep. I think I've already compared him to Wayne Carey, and now I've brought out Jason Dunstall. So yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I um, I wrote him off um, And then we had the chance to um, have a chat with the weed uh, In an interview form And I told him Mate, you've made me eat my words You're putting on an absolute clinic I couldn't be any happier for you For making me eat my words um, And similarly I wrote off Leon Cameron And I wrote off the Giants And mm. they have just come back with a bang, playing the kids, and the kids look absolutely elite. And they are my goal because all of a sudden, um, I'm backing them for the eight. I, um, I Yeah, I am too. Um, I think the eight um, looks quite good, except, and this will be a weird one, I think I still look at the Swans and it's, it's that outlier in the eight. Like, I think if the Swans weren't in the current eight right now and GWS were... I would probably go that's my final eight for the end of the year. But the Swans are fourth, so it's not like they're on the fringe or on the cusp. So it'll be really interesting if the Giants can keep this momentum up to see who they can squeeze out towards the end of the year. But well, I'm with you. Yeah, I was watching the Giants at the start of the year. Um, years and years of clubs just picking the eyes out of that list. And to see them go with their youth, <laughs> and their youth, all of their 
youth are like top 20 picks. And it's every year, even when they've made finals and grand finals, because people have left, they get those compensation picks, which are top, top talent. So yeah. to see them getting a game, it's not like a situation where a Jai Caldwell can't get a game <clears throat> or, a, or a Hartley can't get a game and leaves. It's a situation where their top talent are getting games this year and they're performing. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. I reckon they might squeeze in. And I hope they do because I love when the Giants are up and about. Uh, absolutely. Just quickly, um, before we sort of start to think about wrapping up, um, yep. the you mentioned Sydney in there and they shouldn't be in the eight. They snuck a win home that many will argue they should not have snuck home at all. What were your thoughts on the closing minutes of the Sydney-Geelong game? So, I have an unpopular opinion. Oh, no. Um, well, don't tell me. You wouldn't be going against the Cats, would you? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and it's you know people are going to dismiss my opinion because of uh, my hard stance on the cats. Sometimes I'm not All the convinced. Time. <laughs> I'm not convinced it was absolutely 15 meters. And I know the AFL came out and said, "Look, we've put our hand up, and it was wrong, and it should have been a mark." So I don't know where I've got my measuring tape from, but it it <laughs> did not look absolutely convincing that it was 15 well, as much as the uproar that has followed. <laughs> I, I've always been in the camp of like, you, you know, the old, uh, the old rule in, uh, in primary school sports or even professional sports when in doubt, <laughs> not out. I think, <laughs> yeah. I, I think in footy, if there's doubt, like was it 14 or was it 16, just pay the mark. Like unless, yeah, true. unless there's an obvious five or a very obvious 10, if we're talking about, well, was that 15? It could have been 14. Maybe it was 16. Just pay the mark. Yep. Pay the mark. Um, and uh, right after that, like for me, that was a bit of robbery. But then as if that wasn't enough, to add insult into injury, the umpires absolutely, absolutely put the foot on the throat of Chris Scott by not paying, <laughs> holding, the, holding the ball. When that bloke did absolute, <laughs> gave zero effort to dispose of the footy. I think it was row bottom. If, if that was... Quarter to 15th minute on the wing. That, he would not hesitate to give holding the ball. He'd do the big wind-up as well. He'd blow the whistle and he'd do the big hand action, holding the ball, bit of me time. <laughs> but when it comes to the, the crunch time where we actually need a bit of courage, we need the umpires to uh, really show their worth, uh, they crumbled and they didn't have the courage to pay that holding the ball when it should have been. I think with the holding the ball, the AFL, they're out in their statement was if the play had gone for another couple of seconds before the siren went, they probably would have called it, but it was a bit of saved by the bell. Like the siren went before it was absolutely blow the whistle time holding the balls. (laughs) But um, yeah, you know, obviously I've got Geelong mates who were filthy, like absolutely filthy. How can the AFL come out the next day and say it was wrong? That's not going to bring back the win. And I'm like, that's exactly what happened with the Zach Bailey situation. The AFL came out the next day and said that that was holding the ball. So, um, look, I think it's a little bit of football karma. But yep. to, to be fair, I, I think they are within their rights because they, they probably should have had a kick either five metres out or ten metres out to win that game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, one, one more. Uh, this will probably be our final thing unless you got something else after this to wrap it up. But... Swans and Cats drama, but in the afternoon style. Um, Paddy McCartan, former pick number one. Oh, dear. One, oh, dear. Don't try, tell me. Trying to stake his claim, uh, trying to work his way back into the AFL as sort of Andrew gaffed someone <laughs> in the VFL. You can't um, be doing that, Paddy. What are and you, it was... <laughs> what are you doing throwing... Just, f- sorry, what are you doing throwing fists... When you have the worst history of concussion of all time. Yeah. And it was only just caught on like one of those training uh, end-to-end cameras that just captures one end of the field. It was only just in frame. And it, I think it's Aaron Black. I think it was Aaron Black who used to play for North. Um, <laughs> I, I, I get him and another bloke mixed up, but I'm pretty sure it was him. They were Wasn't Aaron Mullet? Of, might, yes, I don't know. That's the other one I get mixed up with. So it might have been him. It's one of the Aarons. Yeah. Um, they they were doing a little bit of... I, I think he was trying to guard Pat, Paddy McCartan, even though the ball was down the other end of the field, just putting a bit of body on, putting a bit of touch. And Paddy was swatting his arm away, 
So he swatted it away a couple of times and then he does it again. But it was that Andrew Gaff, like, he's clearly just trying to swat his arm away, but he just chinned him. <laughs> and old Aaron Black, Aaron Mullet, whatever his name is, he went down and he was crook. He was real crook. So they reckon he's going to get a six to eighter. Well, deliberate, uh, well, what do they call it? Inten- De- deliberate inten- high. In- yeah, intentional high and um, high impact or extreme or severe impact, whatever the word is. So yep. that is a long long spell on the bench, Paddy, and you can kiss your AFL dreamer bye-bye. Really? You're, well, it's going to be hard from here, isn't it? Well, that that was probably a bit stiff. That was probably a bit mean, Paddy. Um, I take that. <laughs> I do take that back. But look, it's going to be a long road back. You know, if he was to get another gig, you'd think he'd need to play a long another period, year. long period of games with copping a couple of big hits without getting concussed and um and putting the form instead on the board. Instead, he's dishing them. Instead, <laughs> yeah, instead he's dishing them out left, right, and centre. So, oh <laughs> uh, well, bad luck, Paddy. Better luck next year, mate. Um. Oh, I think that's it from my end, unless you got something else, Rog. I think, I think that's wrap it up. I think that's about it, brother. Another another absolutely uh, sterling effort from all involved. I'm a little bit uh, disappointed. I didn't get my curry and um, my, my little sleepover with you this week, so I'm going to have to wait another seven days to get my, my Rogie fix. We'll more than make up for it next week. And um, last week we had a break from the curry. Every other every other show we um, ate curry, but last week we decided to change things up with a bit of fast food. But you best believe that we'll be back with a vengeance next week. <laughs> and that, that chana masala and garlic naan is going to go down an absolute treat. I might ring up and just let them know that we we are coming back next week. Absolutely, <laughs> put put them on notice, Nathan Buckley style. All right, beautiful stuff, Rog. Um, thanks to everyone who's watched. Thanks to everyone who's listened, and we'll see you all next week. Cheers, guys. Keep plugging those back back pockets. <laughs>